there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Hegarty here and in this video we're going to talk about prime factor decomposition. Okay, so what we'd like to learn about today, we'd, learn, we'd like to learn how to break any composite number into a product of primes. This is called prime factor decomposition. So any composite number, um, for example, let's say 20, I would like to break it up into a product, and a product means multiplication, multiplication of primes together. For example, 20, I can do this one in my head, and you'll see later how you get to this, but it's 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 5 those prime numbers multiplied together. That's breaking down, decomposing a number into its prime factors. Okay, so here's the big idea. Okay, this is a massive, massive idea in the whole of maths. The, and it's one of the most important that you'll ever see. Any number, any composite number, let's say, any composite number can be written as two or more prime numbers multiplied together in one unique way. This thing actually has a name. It's called the fundamental, that's how important it is, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. It's basically the bread and butter of all maths. Okay, so any composite number can be written as two or more prime numbers multiplied together in only one way. There are no other ways of doing it. So I'm going to give you a question to show you what I mean. I've written the primes here, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and 19. And here's my question to you. Can you make 6 by multiplying, timesing, together some of the primes above? As many as you want, 2, 3, 4, or more. Can you make 6? In five seconds, I'll show you the answer. Okay, six can be written as two multiplied by three. That's the only way you can do it. You can't find any other primes that multiply to six. So six is two times three. It's unique. There is only one way of writing six as a product of primes. Try the next one. Ten seconds, I'll tell you the answer. Try making 15 by multiplying together some of the primes above, the 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19. Okay, so 15, hopefully you spotted it, there's only one way of doing it. It's 3 multiplied by 5. There are no other primes that can be multiplied to make 15. It's unique, using the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Question 3, have a go. In five seconds, I'll go through. How did you make 35? Well, 35 could only be made by doing 5 multiplied by 7, 5 times 7. There is no other way. There are no other primes that multiply to 35. Hence, we're done. 77. Try and make 77 by multiplying together some of the primes above. Well, 77, hopefully spotted, could be written as 7 multiplied by 11. And hence, it can be written as two primes. The next one. Try and make 30 by multiplying together two or more of the primes. Okay, make, this one might have been a bit more tricky. 30 couldn't be written as two primes multiplied together. There weren't any. 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 7 is 14, 2 times 11. None of these would have worked. 3 times 5, 3 times 7, none of those would have worked. But what you can do is you could say multiply it by three numbers. For example, 2 multiplied by 3 is 6, then multiplied by 5 is 30. There is no other way of finding 30 by multiplying together primes. This is unique again by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Have another go. Um, question 6. Try and make 70 by multiplying together some prime numbers. Okay, 70. How did you find 70? Well, I thought it was a 2 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 7 in this case, because 2 multiplied by 5 is 10, multiplied by 7 is 70. 
and that's the only way of finding it. Now, I'm going to move on to an example. You should copy these. I'm going to do three examples. If you were trying to do the same with 48, write it as a product of primes by looking at the primes and guessing what primes work for you. It's going to be a difficult task. Okay, it's a lot of trial and error. It's, a, it, it's an annoying task. So what you do, you do the following method called prime factor decomposition trees. You write your 48 down. And you look at the first prime, which is 2. And you ask yourself, can, does 2 divide into 48? Or does, can 48 be written as 2 multiplied by something? Yes, it can. It can be 2 multiplied by 24. Now circle your 2, because 2 is prime. You want to find the prime numbers that make up 48. So 48 is made up by 2 multiplied by 24. 24 is composite, so you go to 24. You look at 2. Can 24 be written as 2 multiplied by something? Yes, it can be 2 multiplied by 12. You circle 2 because it's prime. 12 is composite. You haven't broken it down more. OK, so now 12. Can you do it with 12? You look up at your primes and you say, can 12 be written as 2 multiplied by something? It can. 2 multiplied by 6. But 6 is composite. And you try and break up 6. And you look at 2 again first. And it can be written as 2 multiplied by 3. And 3 is prime. So we've broken up 48. Look at 48. We know it's now 2 times 24, but 24 is 2 times 12. And 12 is 2 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. So we know 48 must be 2 multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 3. And that's it decomposed into its prime numbers. So it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And we'll check it. 2 multiplied by 2 is 4. Multiplied by 2 is 8. Multiplied by 2 is 16. Multiplied by 3 is actually 48. And for those of you who know this already, you may look up index notation. You can write that as 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3. Because there are four twos multiplying together. Let's do another one. 60. We want to write 60 as a product of primes. We don't want to guess by looking at the primes because the number's too big. We need a method. So what we do is we write 60 down. Okay? Now, can 60 be written as 2 multiplied by something? Yes, it can be written as 2 multiplied by 30. But 30 is composite. So we try and break 30 up. It can be written as 2 multiplied by 15. Now we look up uh, 15's composite and we say... can. Can 15 be written as 2 multiplied by something, a whole number? No. So we now go to 3. Can it be done as 3 multiplied by something? Yes, 3 multiplied by 5, and 5 is one of our primes. So we can say with certainty that 60 is equal to 2 multiplied by 2, multiplied by 3, multiplied by 5. Using index notation, that's 2 squared, multiplied by 3, multiplied by 5. Check it. 2 multiplied by 2 is 4, multiplied by 3 is 12, multiplied by 5 is 60. Next, and final example, example 3, before you do an exam question, 120. Let's do that, 120. Okay, you can break it into 2 multiplied by 60, but 60 is composite, which you can break into 2 multiplied by 30, but 30 is composite. You can break that into 2 multiplied by 15 but 15 is composite. You can then uh, try and uh, write that as 2 multiplied by something, but you get stuck. So you go for 3, and you can write that as 3 multiplied by 5. So the answer is 2 multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 3, multiplied by 5, i.e. 2 cubed, multiplied by 3, multiplied by 5. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24, times 5 is 120. And we're done. OK, I'd like to finish by giving you an exam style question. An exam style question would say, write the following two numbers as a product of their primes. And it would be without a calculator. So pause the video, have a go, and then I'm going to put the answers up and we'll be done. OK, I'm putting the answers up here. 72 can be written as follows. And 90 can be written as follows. 72 out of interest would be 2 cubed multiplied by 3 squared. And 90 would be 2 multiplied by 3 squared multiplied by 5 in index notation. And we're done. Thanks loads for watching the video. Hope you found it useful and catch you again sometime.